Welcome back to Tetracan Super Monoblock. Today I'm going to burst my Fostex hymen. I actually uh, broke my skin. <laughs> Sorry, such fucking horrendous patter. Bear with me. Um, on Fostex years ago with this very model. This is the only Fostex model that I've actually opened up at the time of making this video. At the time I worked on this unit before, my electrical skills are not what they are now and so although I was able to get the transport working nicely and I did all the same sort of things in terms of cleaning that I would do with a 244 I ended up selling those machines on for parts uh, because there were issues to do with power distribution that I didn't get to the bottom of I didn't really have the uh, skill set and the understanding at that time to deal with it um, but I've been in touch with a guy that I sold a 244 years ago he since sold the 244 on and regretted it and has bought this and um, it needs the belts changed but apparently there's also some sort of minor electrical issues which I'll try and resolve but I'll also film the process of deconstructing this um, from memory the PCBs are a little little bit uglier than they are on Tascams of the same period and there's a lot more of a rat's nest of wires. I seem to remember there was a very specific way of folding some of the ribbon cables and so on just in order to get all the PCBs back into the case after it's been disassembled. Um, so watch on and you can see me confirm or deny my memories as I open this up. Since I am going to be completely disassembling this, which I seem to recall is necessary in order to, to get the mixer. I think you have to take the uh, record playback board out completely before you can get to the mixer on this. Um, I am going to need to remove the knobs, so I'll do those first, and uh, they're just going to lift off. Some of these knobs are a little bit stiff, so I'll demonstrate a technique that I've discussed in other videos, which is to use a bit of dental floss to slip under there and pull up the dental floss with a pair of pliers so that is under there. Grab it. <laughs> and sometimes the floss will break. So if it's really stiff then you maybe want to double up or even triple your floss. So I'm going to triple that up and then twist it. Otherwise we won't be able to get it to sit under the knob. Sometimes it's good to have tweezers handy so you can hack her off. <laughs> Push that under there if it needs a bit of encouragement. Alright, let's see if that's strong enough. Come on. <laughs> so that's pinged off into my workshop, but um, that is a damage free method for removing those if they're really stuck. I've just realised that if you're a bit more sensible, then you're probably not going to want to use a metal implement to push the floss into the gap. Um, I've got this sort of flossing tool with a toothpick at the end. On some models, if the knobs aren't too deeply set, then you can get underneath them using one of these and it's a bit easier than floss. But even where these recesses for the knobs are really deep, um, you can use the plastic end there. That's actually a little bit easier to fit the floss under like that, and then you can... And that one came off a bit less explosively. So I've got the rest of the knobs off. This is quite a heavy unit. I guess that's maybe 8 kilograms, 9 kilograms, so I'm definitely going to want to put some kind of cushion. And this very loud fabric contains a good few or four inches of foam. I'll put that down on my work surface so that the weight of the unit doesn't damage any of these potentiometers when I'm pressing down with the screwdriver. I received this with most of the screws removed, but they're of this white ferrule type going into plastic mounting posts. Um, I think those are a bit thicker than the ones that we've seen coming out of 244s and 246s. This will then lift away and uh, we're looking at transformer um, power filtering and conversion to DC happening here and possibly here by the looks of it because we've got heat sinks for voltage regulators, 
Toshiba chips here. I imagine that that is to do with the control because it's piano touch buttons. That looks like that's where the tape heads are joining the circuit and we've got these little relays so this will be changing whether the um, play and record head is transmitting or receiving information to the tape depending on whether it's record or playback mode. We've got a big oscillator here. I'm trying to see if there's yeah, these are the four sub oscillators, I think. So you've got a per channel record oscillator and a master oscillator, which is joining to your arrays head. So all that tells me that's the record and playback board. In fact, I can see the little Dolby symbol and some proprietary chips here. So that'll be the encoder and decoder chips for your DBX sections here. Um, and yeah, it looks like we're going to need to remove that to get at the mixer board below. The client's given me information that leads me to believe that the real system isn't working. Fast forward and rewind are lazy, so I'm going to have to open this up and remind myself whether there's an idler tire in there that needs to be replaced. So yeah, next step is to remove this transport unit. I'll come back to you once I've done that and tell you how I've done it. That's the transport removed now. The heads are identifiable by these thin grey cables. They're plugging into sockets here. The sockets are similar to what you'd see on the 244, except the gender of these KK Molex headers and sockets are reversed. You would have the pin header on the board on the 244, whereas it's on the daughter board on these. The attachments for power and um, control signals for the motors and solenoids are attached with two Molex KK sockets here. I'm a bit stiff, but no problem really. There was one screw, a metal screw, and a little star adapter for earthing to a little hole here. You can see I've written earth times three and a star on the metal with a permanent marker. I mean, I don't need that reference because I'm speaking to this video. I can watch my own video, but it's good practice to leave notes to yourself. And you can see that there are two earth connections that would join there. One with one wire and one with two wire. When I say earth connector, I mean these ring crimp endings that are used for earth connections. Then the cassette player is attached to the chassis with four of these screws with very long shanks, which is good because it means it's easy to access the screw head. And um, there's two on this side, they're easy to see. There's two on that side. And initially I couldn't see them because all these ribbon cables that are connecting the control section to the record amplifier playback board here were obscuring it. So you have to lift those ribbon cables out of the way to access those screws. 